What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again. Hold on. Okay. I just wanted to make sure they was, you know, right. We back again for Candy and the Game. This season three. Well, nope. Mm-mm. We ain't there yet, okay? This season one, episode three. Well, episode three, okay. Bitch, get your shit together. Rowdy employees and um, uptight managers. At this point, we literally only on episode three. And, um, baby, either I would have quit or I would have had to pull Candy and tie to the side. Now, Candy, I know this your restaurant. And listen, I know, like, you paying me or whatever. But at the end of the day, what I need you to look into is fire everybody. And if you need to fire me, just fire me too and start the fuck all over. Okay? Because ain't no reason why we should have all this goddamn contention that's going on in this damn restaurant. All right? What the fuck is going on? I'm sitting here like, girl, what? Now, let me put this on the pause. Candy. Girl. Whoever over there, give us some deets as to what's happening. You going to be back on the shy? That's all I really want to know because you barely be on the episodes. I don't care about that. You going to be on the shy, right? So what's going on with you and Duda? Like, is Duda coming back? What's happening with his storyline? Like, spill something. Okay, now we're going to get back to the show. We pick up what we left up. Uh, left off at with Torian and Phillip. Bitch, I thought that shit was over with last week, okay? I said what the fuck I had to say about Phillip, you know? And um, this shit continue. This shit continue. Now, Phillip, you... You literally still coming at this man because of, you know, who what he did or what you claim he did. And, you know, like Torian said... You didn't even make an introduction to me, and you making it seem as if you making this big production. And to be honest, Philip, this is all your fault, all right? This is all your fault. Yes, you know, Torrin has heard things about what other people said about you. And yes, you should not go off of opinions of other people. You should give people a chance. And, you know, you didn't even give Torrin a chance to give you a chance, okay? So... He came in and he put his stuff on the bar because he's already been hired. You're not interviewing him. You're not doing anything like that. At least that's not what was presented to us. He's already talked to Don Juan. I'm pretty sure Candy has already said what she said. He came in there to do the job that he was supposed to be doing. You're the one that interjected yourself trying to be nosy and see who the hell it is. Understandable because you want to know, like, who is this random person? Okay, but it's the way that you said things. You came off less like, uh, why are you here? Okay, who are you? You're supposed to come over here and introduce yourself to me. Why you couldn't just say, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm Philip, and you are? And he probably would have been like, oh, I'm touring. You know, uh, Don Juan just told me to come back here. I didn't even see you over there because he didn't see him. Or if he did, you know, why Why was he up here looking for him? It's not like he came in there looking for him. Because that is the same fucking story that he didn't told freaking Don Juan. I said, oh, so we running back to people? We running back to people for somebody that want to be the boss so bad. You forgot that you got a boss above you. Girl, listen. Philip sir. Like Torrin said, listen, I'm, I, I've am i already got the job, okay? Candy done told me. I'm here. You're going to have to eat that, all right? But at the same time, you want respect. You have to give respect. And I will say this. I'm not just going to put it all on Philip. Because like I said, it's third episode and some of these motherfucking employees are disrespectful as hell. We already can see that. But at the same time, some of them are really going off of the way that he's coming at them. That's just how it is. And, and you, like I said, you got to have a balance. So, of course, he want to go over there and tell Don Juan this big bird in a yellow shirt and his white vans. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, Philip. No, Philip, you could have did better than that. I said, see, you don't hang around. I know exactly who you hang around, girl. And, uh, ooh, I don't want to call you a girl because, you know, I, I just call everybody a girl. I'm sorry. I don't know who you hang around, sir, because I don't want to offend. You know, because that just, that just, you could have kept that in the vault. Okay? You could have kept that in the vault. I said, what are you trying to do? You know, of course, Candy come over there trying to see what's going on. And he get up in his feelings about, you know, um, he, she, he don't want to deal with him. And y'all going to have to deal with him. And this is the reason why stuff be going on. I said, oh, you're going off on the people that's paying you. 
Uh, they ain't got to answer to you just like you said. You ain't have to answer to them hourly employees that you be talking about. I said, oh, the shoe was on the other foot and you don't like it, bitch. You don't like it. Even though I understand where he coming from, once again, it is your tone. It is your deliverance, okay? You know, we can be professionally stern, but we can have respect for people. We can come off respectful and yet professionally stern at the same time where people don't take offense to it. And Philip don't know that, okay? Or he has and practice that i don't know what type of environment he was in pr prior to this where i guess everybody must have got along or you know they probably just cowered to them because they probably was you know people that just never talk back or whatever but now you're in an environment that's different and these people gonna talk back these people are not gonna respect you the way that you think that you need to be respected and it says a lot about them and it says a lot about you as well both in the negative and both in the positive Okay, you know, Candy was like, you 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 gonna have to cut that down. Okay, you ain't finna tell me how I'm gonna run my shit. I said, well, technically that's what you brought him in there to get some problem areas or whatever. But at this point, Philip is coming becoming part of the problem as well. You were brought in to fix the situation, to iron out certain things, and you know, it's not happening the way that you wanted to. All right. Meanwhile, you got Torin going over there to Patrick House. Listen, Patrick had all that Hennessy up there. I said, bitch, use a hoe. You still got a little hoe up in you. All that damn Hennessy on display like that. Niggas, I don't know how come Hennessy, when and why did Hennessy just became the staple drink of black men? Mostly black men because that's who I associate with. So that's what I know. And they all love fucking Hennessy. The majority of them. Okay. When did that become the staple drink? Oh my God. Hennessy is nasty by itself, bitch. And I'm using the bitch that don't take no chaser with my drinks. Okay. Hit me and hit me hard, ho. Okay. But Hennessy, I just can't. That shit is nasty. Y'all got some strong ass stomachs and strong ass tongue. Because it just <laughs> wouldn't be me. Anyway, Patrick over there, you know, he trying to get his house, uh, his place, him and uh, Melvin's place, you know, a little decorated or whatever. Touring, you know, giving him little ideas and everything, trying to do the kitchen, do the, uh, you know, live room. And, and, and he got this portrait that he want to put up of this cheetah. Because he get is it a cheetah or a cougar? Because he's dating a cougar. I said, boy, stop it. Now, what's put in the comments, okay? What do you define as a cougar? Do you define it as somebody that's a couple of years older than you? It's like, now last week, didn't he say two years? And now this time he said four. Bitch, which one is it? Or am I hearing things? Okay, listen. What y'all define as a cougar? How old do you have to be to be a cougar? Like, if what's the age difference? Because I'm like, that don't seem like a cougar, bitch. She just four years old. All right. You know, here look. He a little on the short bus. He giving me a little Porsche tease a little bit, you know, and it's likable a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, uh, he asked about, Tori asked about uh, uh, Melvin. What's his opinion? Girl, he don't care. That's what, uh, you know, Patrick said. Because Melvin sure enough wasn't there. Because you know what Melvin was doing? Melvin was fucking working, bitch. Let me tell you something. I was looking at Melvin at that bar. I said, you know what? If I was straight, I would go for a husky nigga just like that. <laughs> Anyway, moving on from that, you know, he want to throw a little housewarming party after everything get done and you want to invite everybody to come. Understandable. That's cute. Listen, do y'all hang out with y'all have uh, co-workers at the work like they do? Baby, they too damn close for me. Maybe it's because at my job, it ain't really that many people that that on my level or whatever. And we ain't really got that. Anyway. They back at the OLG, okay? They trying to get shit together. Brandon is the manager, right? He's like the bar manager and stuff like that, the floor manager or whatever. So we get into this whole other thing about respect as well. They don't really respect Brandon because you know why? Brandon made that environment that way, okay? He's made himself more so of like the homie, you know what I'm saying? We kick it or whatever, but when we get to work, we do whatever. He's lax. He don't even assert authority. When you look at him, you don't get a authoritative figure from him and he just does whatever he wants to do they're trying to get down unique to get down there she late she talking about son she just came back from some a dance rehearsal and um i'll beat that in a minute i said girl what man mind you shandrika up here talking about some you know down unique she be late as hell all the time i said bitch you was late on the first episode <laughs> What are you talking about? 
all of y'all asses be late at this point. You know, her and Brian just kicking over there. Um, at one point, you know, we see, you know, Shandri, because she's taking the initiative, cleaning up stuff, fixing stuff, or whatever. But Chad Brandon, he's sitting his ass down at the bar. He's sitting his ass down at the bar eating, okay? Mind you, that was going to be an issue later on in the episode. Um, so, of course, at this point, because Dominique is the server, uh, drink server, Brian has to do it. And that's what Brandon told him to do it. And Brian was like, it's like nobody pays any regard for my issues, okay, and how this may affect me because he's, you know, going through what he's going through with alcoholism and trying to stay clean. But it's a good thing that he did not let that affect him. But at the same time, you know, people... People, you, you can't expect people to be all thoughtful or whatever and change their whole schedule just because of some things that you're going through. But if you put it out there, mostly they will do that. But at the same time, they showed that nasty ass kitchen. Don Unique came up in there. I was like, oh my God, that is disgusting. I said, Candy, y'all really allowed them to film that shit? Shit all over the goddamn floor. I'm sitting here like, do you really want me to come there or do you not want me to come there? Okay, I literally just saw... Uh, uh, what a burger video. Well, um, I ain't gonna put this on them, but it was a what a burger restaurant. A mouse came out of nowhere and that motherfucker jumped into the fryer. Okay, the whole fucking thing of grease and fried his ass. I said, what the fuck is going on? Now, y'all better clean that shit up. Okay, clean that shit up, get a mop. Y'all should be cleaning up behind yourselves every time y'all do something. You shouldn't let that shit pile up like that. Y'all fully staffed, ain't y'all? Meanwhile, Philip come down there. You know, uh, Shandrika, she got to tell him. So listen, I, cause he was like, how everything going? It's chaos right about now. It's, it's, it's out of control a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, I had to do this. I had to do that. I did my stuff. Plus I just went on ahead and took the initiative and I did this or whatever. But you know, Brandon, he just sitting around. He ain't doing nothing or whatever. Mind you, the sink stopped the fuck up. I said, oh no, this is not right. Close the restaurant down and get this fixed. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, um, Philip was okay with it. I was like, oh my God. Like they're having a positive exchange. And it's a whole totally 180 difference from what we first saw them having their little negative exchange. And I was like, this is a step forward. Because Philip acknowledged the fact that, you know, Shandrika, she she put it out there that, you know, she doing her stuff and she's also taking initiative to do other stuff that's fitting. Understandable because, you know, Brandon has it in his idea, in his head, because he's the manager. He can do whatever or whatever. He he don't really have nothing to do because he literally said that later on in the episode when the issue came up with Brian. And I'm sitting here like as a manager, you know, sometimes it is OK for you to take the initiative. If you see that the staff is lacking in something, if a person, if you're down a member or whatever, you're not just going to sit there and not do nothing. Sit there at the bar and eat your food while everybody else is sitting here trying to work. You know that that that's why people don't respect your ass. You have to lead by example, okay? Lead by example if you want them to follow, you know? Um, the whole situation with Brian, you know, sitting at the uh, at the bar, you know, with Rashard, and, and, and Brian was like, well, you were sitting at the bar? Well, I'm management, and I can do that, but the employees, they can't do that. And I'm sitting here like, no, you're an employee, so I'm pretty sure that rule applies to you as well. And you just broke it because you think because you're management that you can do that. Because most of these rules all apply to everybody. Nobody who's working there should be sitting there at the bar, okay? And that's basically what it is. Carol, let me put that on mute. Somebody just text me. But um, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> Fire everybody. Fight everybody because nobody got respect for nobody, and I'm just sitting here like, okay. Meanwhile, you got I just thought I put that there. We go. Meanwhile, the crew meet up after work at their old place or whatever that they go play some shuffleboard. I said, shuffleboard that sounds so old. What is shuffleboard, you know? Um. You know, Patrick was there. Melvin was there. You know, it's just a regular little bar or whatever. They having fun. Eventually, Don Unique come. You know, Torrin is telling them about, uh, you know, redecorating the place or whatever. Melvin is down with it, okay? Don Unique come there. We see Patrick, I mean, uh, uh, Brandon in there. 
well, I don't even know if Brandy came yet or if he was there. Either way, she was sitting there texting somebody. <laughs> Turn was like, who is that? She was like, my man. I said, oh, so that's your man? That's your man? Or you just trying to be smart with it? Oh, yeah, he was there. Meanwhile, everybody's chilling. Next thing you know, Brian shows up. It's cool. And then Shondrika shows up with her tender boo fiance, Mr. June. Okay, I said, hmm. June look like... June looked like he been in jail since June. Now, let me stop. Let me stop. Okay. He looked a little hard. He looked like he could whoop some ass. That's what he looked. You know what I'm saying? He looked a little... He looked decent. I like it. But anyway, moving on from that, did you notice the way that Patrick's face changed when Shandrika came in there? If you over her, she wasn't nothing but a little fucking around or whatever. It was a situation ship. You got your woman. You know what I'm saying? You happy. You in love. You know, Torin talking about how you keep on talking about Safari. Safari this, Safari that. Bitch, can we meet Safari since you keep talking about her? Baby, the way his face changed when she came up in there, I said, oh, what is this about? Come to find out, June and um, Patrick had a little run in. A year ago, you know, they had a little tussle, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just because Patrick came out there, he probably was being a little asshole because, you know, he wanted to flex or whatever. He felt some type of way that the nigga was with his bitch. I mean, well, was with his thing that he was dipping off on or whatever. And, um, baby, my mouth be so vulgar sometimes. I got to reel it back in and I just don't even be realizing it. But, you know... It looked like June probably whooped that ass and he feels some type of way, you know. But at the same time, <clears throat> June kept it cool. You know, Patrick kept it cool. Even though you could tell he was sweating a little bit of bullets, he was feeling some type of way seeing her there with him. I said, Shandrika, you did what you did on purpose because why you put that red dress on? This is not Johnny Gill. My, 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 my. Okay? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I said, we are going to play shuffleboard. Put on some pants, all right? But anyway, so that what was going on. Um, you know, I did like the fact that Shandrika was there for Brian, you know, saying that she's always going to look up for him uh, and, and see how he is because of the struggles that he been through. And, um, just listening to his story throughout this whole episode, it was very much heartbreaking because a lot of Brian's story is my uncle's story. And if y'all know me, y'all already know that he did pass away from alcoholism. So it do hit, it do hit, especially at the end when he was really going into it. So that was that. Meanwhile, you got Brandon and Dom Unique. I just need them to go ahead and fuck, okay? Because that's what it is. Y'all flirting. He talking about something, give me a kiss. I was like, y'all ain't supposed to be doing all that, you know? Um, They had this meeting later on at the OLG uh, group meeting. And this is what shit started getting rough, okay? Because after this little staff meeting, Brian and Rashad, like I said, were sitting at the bar, because things was going slow. You know, Rashad did ask Brian to put the menus down or whatever on the table. But then Brandy came over there. Even Rashad said, we're not supposed to be sitting at the at the um at the bar. Brian's whole thing was, well shit, Brandy be sitting here, so he ain't getting in trouble. So let me sit here too. Y'all can't follow what everybody else does, okay? Just because somebody else wanna break the rules don't mean that you break the rules and you're gonna get away with it, all right? That does not happen. And of course, that's exactly what happened. He got in trouble because Brandon told him, You gotta get up, you can't be sitting here. You know, he talked back. I don't feel like it was very disrespectful the way that they was trying to hype it up to be like, but he shouldn't have, he should have just said, okay, cool. It wasn't, you shouldn't have, listen, and this is what I'm talking about when I say Brandon does not command respect. He does not give off authoritative figure, you know, because he's been so lax in the way that he's been doing his job, you know, and at the same time, Brian, regardless of how you feel, and I like you, bruh, I like you. You one of my favorites on the show because you're funny. I love your story. It, it resonates and everything. But at the end of the day, you are an employee. And Brandon, he is over you. And if he says you need to get up from that bar, you get your ass up from that bar and you go do whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing or at least make it look like you're doing something, okay? Because you are an employee and you are still on st on staff, on, on time, okay? You are on the clock. Meanwhile, you don't do that talking back stuff. You don't do all that. It wasn't no need for it, even though I didn't feel like it was very disrespectful. But, um... But... <laughs> It just wasn't needed, you know what I'm saying? And, of course, 
Brandon went and told Don Juan, because Don Juan, listen, Don Juan just be coming in there trying to do his do the books, okay? He just be trying to put the numbers in. And he I know he just be seeing all of this shit. He be in his own little corner. And then they come over there want to tell him everything that's going on. Because Brandon want to tell Philip. Mind you, earlier when he asked for Sean Drinker what was going on, she said it was chaos. Minus my, then he asked Brandon what was going on, how the day was going. He said everything was good. I said, bruh. See, he's he not giving you the truth, all right? But then you will go run to Philip and tell him that Brian is doing this and he's not respecting me or whatever, so they go talk to Don Juan. And, you know, of course, Phillips feels some type of way and they bring in Brian over because Philip does not like Brian. Philip feels as though Brian should never have came back. And if you want to go on that logic, if you want to go on that logic, a lot of these issues is happening because Candy keep on bringing back people that left. Or you let go. If stuff keep happening and the same shit happen, that's insanity, bitch. Okay, we got to let these old staff members go. If they leave, let them leave and, and bring in some new, more qualified people. That's what we need to do, okay? Because all this shit, when <laughs> you talking about something, you going through so many goddamn managers and shit like that, maybe the problem ain't really the managers. It's the employees that you are in hiring underneath those managers, the service and all that shit. Maybe you just need to wipe that slate clean and bring in a whole fresh new crew, okay? That's more qualified you know but um brian is sitting there and philip is just going in about basically how he lazy he don't do shit he this and you don't talk about this and you don't uh uh you don't raise your voice at the bar you embarrassing people you handle this situation in front of the customers and that's not what you're supposed to do and of course with the way that Br philip is coming off He's putting 20 on 10, as Rox would say, I will feel, because when we looked at the situation, unless we saw something, they saw something that we didn't see, obviously, um, it wasn't that deep. What they should have just said was, you know what, Brian, I have been observing you and, you know, you are not doing the best that you can do. Okay. You're slacking off a little bit and you need to do better. If somebody, you got to follow the rules, you got to come in and you got to work, okay? That's what you need to do. And you want to know what else they should have did? Because Brian got loud. Brian got loud because Philip was doing the fucking most. Philip was doing the most. And I said, Brian, don't do that. Don't do that because you're playing right into what he's saying. Philip want to make him look like the absolute bad guy and want to make himself look so innocent in this, okay? Brandon want to be innocent. Brandon, you're not innocent. Brian, you're not innocent. And Philip, you're not innocent. All of y'all are fucked up in some type of ways, okay? And so, at the end of the day, I'm sitting here like, why are y'all having this conversation? When we have meetings at my job with the employees, we either go into the boss office away from the goddamn public. That's what we do. And Don Juan had to take Brian outside because, you know, he had to blow up or whatever. Fill up up in his feelings and all this shit. And, 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 and he basically trying to say that Don Juan don't know what he doing. That's basically what it is. Like, he probably part of the problem. Because Don Juan called Philip out and was like, yeah, he may be the issue right now. But you done had an issue at least three times already since you've been here in the short times that you've been here. Okay, like you, you becoming an issue as well, Don. And, and, and he, cause, cause you know, Brian said he that uh, they was gonna suspend Brian, but at one point, Philip was like, "I can't fire you." I said, "Oh, so you can't fire you now? Is it because you can't fire him, or you know, you don't, you don't want to fire him just now because the way that you used to be acting was as if you can fire and hire people." You know, like you can threaten their job, you know, security and all that stuff. So now you're saying that you can't fire the man, but you can suspend him. Which one is it? Okay. I mean, if you have all this authority or whatever, but hey, it is what it is. And trust me, I get how it is to work. I, I, I'm one of those persons that I, I like a professional atmosphere, but I don't like a person to micromanage me the way that Philip does. All right. And you have to. You want these employees to respect you, but yet you don't respect them and it shows, all right? When you first came in, you were showing that you don't respect them and you was looking your nose down at them. How do you expect them to want to be on your team and do whatever it is that you say? And then as for the employees, you want to keep your job, all right? If you wasn't in a other, uh, if you was in another environment that wasn't under this candy or tide or this lax or whatever, this family environment or whatever, majority of y'all would have been fired. 
Majority of y'all would have been fired. Philip getting pissed off. He going in there talking to himself in his car and, and basically talking shit about Don Juan and how he don't understand. But now I got to go up in there and I got to smooth this out. I said, Philip, shut your mouth up. Now, let me tell you something. Philip reminds me of... The reason why I can't stand Philip the way that he's doing this because it's bringing back flashbacks from when I first got my job in the library system. In the first location I was at, I was at the big branch. And everything was good for the first year or two, whatever, cool. And when I tell you our department ran so fucking smoothly, we had no issues going on. We always was like one of the top departments, right? Right? So our boss at that time, she left because she went out of state. So we got another boss. Okay, cool. When I tell you that bitch came in trying to just revamp everything. Okay, you want to do things your way. It's cool. But my whole thing is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you want to implement some new stuff, that's fine. But what she fucked up with was she was literally over our shoulders, you know, clocking everything that we do. And I did not like that shit. I did not like that shit because it felt like she was always on my dick. And I was just not understanding. Why are you breathing down my neck? Why are you trying to check off everything that I'm doing when we've never had a problem? I've never been rolling up or anything like that. Next thing you know, we had a meeting. I told that bitch off so professionally. And it was a shock because I'm so quiet. When I'm at work, I'm a quiet bitch. But when I get pissed off and I have to say something, I'm going to say it. And ever since then, ain't never had a problem since. I ain't never had a problem since with anybody else. Philip, that's what y'all need to do. Y'all need to have the whole staff sit down with Philip and tell him what it is, okay? Y'all need to go to a goddamn course management shit, whatever, because this ain't right. <laughs> you know, this is not right. I said, why y'all having this many problems? So, of course, Brian, he gets suspended. Then we get Patrick going to see his girlfriend, Safari. You know, she do liposuction, the cool fat shit. Um, some other stuff, whatever the shit she do. Okay. I was just like, oh, so you a jack of all trades, huh? And, you know, he Googled for Cocoa Puff for some safari. Wow. I said, all right. You know, he talked about some, oh, I'm a little bit fat. I need to get some stuff. I said, fat where? Me being a fat person, I be sitting here looking at y'all that be like, oh, I'm fat. I need to lose a little bit of weight. And when y'all say a little bit of weight, y'all be like, five pounds. And I be sitting here like... Five pounds where? Ten pounds where? What is it going to do? You're still going to look the fucking same. And yet, I need to lose at least ten times that. Okay? And I'm sitting here like, no, bitch. This is that. Okay? I'm sitting here looking at Patrick like, sir, where the fat at? In your titty? Just tone it up a little bit. <laughs> she said, I'm going to just, you know, it, it cools the fat and it clump it together and then you piss it out. I said, oh, so that's how it works. Thank you for explaining it. So, he wound up talking about the house. And Torrin coming over there to do the interior decorating. She was like, you know, uh, to be honest, I don't understand why he there. And I feel like I can do the interior decorating because that's what I want to do for us. I said, mm, all right. And, and of course, Patrick folded. He was like, that's okay, baby. You can do it. You can do it. And then we can do the housewarming. Exactly. And he was like, so when we do the housewarming party, I want everybody to come. I even invited old girl I used to mess with a uh, uh, long time ago. And she was like, oh. He was like, Chandrika? And he was like, I mean, everybody was at the table. So I decided just, you know, because everybody was at the table, might as well just go ahead and invite her because everybody was at the table. It would have been awkward. She was like, I just don't feel like that that's right to put me in that position to have to see her and all this stuff. I said, ma'am, it's getting very much insecure. Okay, it's getting very much insecure because if I'm secure enough in my relationship, that bitch in her relationship, bitch, I don't give a fuck who you bring as long as y'all respect my space. All right, like, and they weren't even in a relationship. But then again, the way Patrick froze the fuck up when she came up in, that was eyeballing. Like, you eye-sexed her when she came in in that red dress, okay? But he was like, okay, cool, she not coming, all right? I disinvited her. We disinvited her. I said, all right, Safari, you, you, you are the older woman in this shit. <laughs> she said, bitch, I'm putting my foot down. I said, okay, put your foot down, lady. Meanwhile, um... We got the we got the aunties, right? Chandrika, 
apparently, you know, she's a swim coach instructor. Okay, she's been swimming since she's been four years old. And so she's coming over there to do some, you know, swim aerobics with the girls, the, the, the women, you know, the aunties. And um, Candy comes and Dom Unique comes and everybody goes out and get into the pool. And um, I don't know how long they was up in there. But Aunt Bertha said, bitch, let me get the fuck up out this shit because I don't need this. I, I, the fuck I need to do this? I be up in the tub at the, at the house. I know how to move my legs. I said, I'm Bertha. Bitch, this is got this. What we trying to exercise, okay? That's what we trying to do. You have to be a team player sometimes, I'm Bertha. But see, I'm Bertha me back later on. Because the girls, they would sit there at the wards and they was just talking. And they was talking about the whole situation with Philip and uh, Shandrika and the fact that he let her go uh, or told her to go home. Now, see, Shandrika, let me tell you this. You're not going to sit here. You're not going to lie. Okay? You're not going to lie like that. That man didn't send you home. That man sent you home for two reasons. Because you kept on talking back. That's one. And you wasn't doing what you were supposed to do. And two, because of his ego. So don't sit there and say, listen, I ain't do nothing. And then uh, Joy said, well, you did, you, you, he was, because she said, if I see him, we don't have no more problems now. I see him, I go to the other direction. She said, because you don't do what you did that got you sent home. That's what it is. I said, true, true. But girl, you knew exactly why you got sent home. It was a couple of reasons. Meanwhile, in that little confession, Mama Joy said she like him. Because he's stern with it, okay? And I feel like Philip kind of give her old school vibes. And it probably is, you know. He real stern, okay? He's stuck and stiff, okay? Meanwhile, Umbertha, while everybody else was saying, yeah, I like Philip, I like Philip, Umbertha face went, I can't stand him. I hate him. I said, oh, now that is strong. But I said, you got to speak your truth, Umbertha. That shit made me laugh. Girl, Umbertha is a woman out of my own heart. Because, bitch, I'm going to tell you how it is. Y'all over here really liking this shit? Quit lying. When y'all be seeing videos that ain't even funny, y'all be like, oh, my God, it's so funny. And I be sitting here like, where's the funny at? <laughs> That's what Umbertha gives me. Meanwhile, uh, we get this whole scene with Torin and, um, you know, Brian. They meet up at the ice cream shop. And, you know, Torin apologizes to Brian for not being there um, <clears throat> in his time of need, you know, or they're not being as close as they were. And Brian had to admit that it wasn't that Torin, Torin, pulled himself away. Brian was pushing people away because he was in the throes of his addiction. Not only was he addicted to alcohol, but he was also addicted to drugs. And, you know, um, he was going through the motions and, you know, they get to why he got so addicted. Why? He said at one point he didn't even realize that he had a problem, you know, but then the quarantine came and you drinking gallons of vodka. I said, now, bitch, vodka is my drink of choice. And I know how much that should get you fucked up real quick. And you drinking a gallon? I said, is it a gallon a day? Wow. How are you still standing, Brian? Meanwhile, he was like, what well, woke him up? Because Torn was like, what got you to the point where you needed to stop? He said at one point he was throwing up blood like three times a day. I said, oh, wow. Your stuff was fucked up. Your stomach lighting was just shitty and everything. And then he said uh, his sister. His sister uh, committed. She unlived herself. Uh, basically what it sounded like because they said when a, um, when an ambulance got there, they saw like a gallon of vodka, vodka bottles around her bed or whatever. So it seemed like she drunk herself to death. So, you know, that was a wake up call and, you know, he's still dealing with that. And that made me tear up a little bit. Cause like I said, it reminded me of my uncle. Um, <clears throat> but Fortunately, he's three months in. So, you know, he's doing good. I I like the fact that they are checking up on him. And he's being open with his story. But um, that was the old lady gang. Oh, no. That was Candy in the gang. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.